majilan landid in maktan to Christianize them everyone. Dahil mga Muslim po ang tao sa maktan Cebu. So sino ang nasa lubong ni Magellan pag pagdating na pagdating niya sa Mactan Cebu? Nakasalubong ni Magellan si Dato Lapu-Lapu sa Dalampasigan. So sino si Dato Lapu-Lapu? Isang Muslim. Hinamon ito kaagad ng away ni Magellan. Ngunit ayaw ng gulo ni Dato Lapu-Lapu dahil isa siyang Muslim. Sabi ni Dato Lapu-Lapu, umuwi oh. na naman. Ang katotohanan, ang Islam ay hindi bago sa Pilipinas. Kaya nga, ang mga dating Kristiyano, kapag nag-Muslim, hindi tama na sabihin silang nagpabinyag sa Islam dahil kung papasok ka sa Islam, wala naman binyaga ng mga ganap. At lalong hin mali na sabihin sila ay nagpalit ng reliyon. Kundi ang tama na katawagan tulad sa akin na dating kristyano nagmuslim, ang tama na katawagan sa akin ay isang balik Islam. Bakit balik Islam? Dahil para sa atin mga kababayan na hindi pa mga muslim, kung babalikan natin ang kasaysayan ng Islam sa Pilipinas, Di hamak po na nauna ito kumpara sa Christianity. Ayon sa kasaysayan ng Islam sa Pilipinas, 1380 pa lamang dumating na ang isang Arabong misyonaryo na si Sharif Makdum. Dumating siya sa parting Mindanao at doon siya unang-unang nagpalaganap ng Islam. 1380. Kaya, pagdating sa Pilipinas, doon una siya tumuloy sa parting Mindanao. Doon siya una nagpalaganap. Paglipas ng ilang panahon, dumating din sa atin ang sampung datos. Pinag-aralan natin ito nung nasa elementary grade pa tayo. Dato Sumakwil, Dato Paduhinog, Dato Lapu-Lapu, Dato Balinsula, Dato Sikatuna. Ang nakakalungkot lang sa ngayon sa Pilipinas na ikilala lamang si Dato Puti sa Suka at Tuyo na wala tayong kamalay-malay, ito si Dato Puti, siya ang leader ng sampung dato dahil bihasa yan sa paglalakbay sa karagatan. At dumaong sila sa parting Bisaya sa Iloilo, nakabili ng lupa kay Marikudo, na si Marikudo ang pinuno ng mga ita at nagtayo naman ng pamayanan. Si Sharif Makdum sa Mindanao, ang sampung datos sa Iloilo, di nagtagal ang tatlong dato kasama si Dato Puti, tumulak patungong Norte dumaong sa Nasugbo, Batangas. Kaya sa atin mga kababayan na may kakilalang mga taga Batangas, huwag kayong magtaka na mga Batangginyo, Batangginya, minuminuto at uras-uras nilang tinatawag ang Diyos ng mga Muslim. Ala e, ala e, ala e. Dahil tumagal ang tatlong dato sa Nasugbo, Batangas. Mga mahal na tagapakinig, paiksiin natin ang pagsasalaysay at pagsasalarawan. Kailan dumating ang mga Kastila sa Pilipinas para dalhin o introduce ang pananampalatayang Christianity? Alam nyo, mga mahal at tagapakinig, laking gulat ko nang mapakinggan ko ang kanta ni Yuyoy Bilyami. Si Yuyoy Bilyami, hindi siya Muslim. Pero nung mapakinggan ko ang lyrics ng kanta niya, ayon sa lyrics ng kanta ni Bilyami, On March 16,1521, when Philippines was discovered by Magellan, the people were baptized under the name of Christ, and that's the beginning of our Catholic life. Napansin natin, March 16,1521 lamang, dumating ang mga Kastila upang dalhin ang pananampalatayang sangalan ng Ama, ng Anak, at ng Diyos Espiritu Santo. Samantalang 1380, nandun na ang Islam. Kaya huwag tayong magtaka nang dumating ang mga Kastila sa Pilipinas, ang mga namumuno ay mga raha at mga, da mga dato. Pagdating ng mga Kastila 
sa kalamang nila introduce ang Christianity. Kaya sa lyrics, sa kadugtong ng kanta ni Bilyami, When Magellan landed in Mactan to Christianize them everyone but Lapu-Lapu met him on the shore to tell Magellan to go back home. Ikikristyanize ba ni Magellan ang Mactan Cebu kung kristyano na ang mga tao? Kaya niya ikikristyanize. When Magellan landed in Mactan, to Christianize them everyone dahil mga Muslim po ang tao sa Mactan Cebu. So, sino ang nasalubong ni Magellan pag, pagdating na pagdating niya sa Mactan Cebu? Nakasalubong ni Magellan si Dato Lapu-Lapu sa Dalampasigan. So, sino si Dato Lapu-Lapu? Isang Muslim. Hinamon ito kaagad ng away ni Magellan. Ngunit ayaw ng gulo ni Dato Lapu-Lapu dahil isa siyang Muslim. Sabi ni Dato Lapu-Lapu, umuwi ka na lamang. Malakas ang loob ni Magellan na hamunin si Dato Lapu-Lapu ng away dahil sa panahon na yan, si Magellan ay nakadamit ng bakal. Kung tawagin niyan sa atin noon ay kutamaya. Samantalang si Dato Lapu-Lapu ang ginawa sa kanya, nakabahag lang ang suot. So malakas ang loob ni Magellan na laban na hamunin siya ng laban. Hindi Walang nagawa kung si, si Lapu-Lapu kung di siya labanan. Kaya sa kanta ni Bilyami, When the battle began at dawn, Bolos is first versus guns and cannon. When Magellan was hit on his neck, Stumbled down and cried and cried. Kaya ang mga mahal na tagapakinig na ating mga kaubayan ngayon, hindi lingid sa ating kalaman na ang pumatay kay Magellan ay si Dato Lapu-Lapu. Kaya nga, ang katotohanan sa kabayanihan, kung tutuusin ang unang bayani ng Bansang Pilipinas ay isang Muslim, si Dato Lapu-Lapu. Hinadlangan niya, siya ang pumatay kay Magellan na walang habas na sinasakop ang ating bansa. was the Philippines a Muslim country before it was colonized by different countries? The short answer, yes and no. Yep, yes and no. Let's start with no. Why? Because the Philippines back then, well, there was no Philippines back then. The country that we now call the Philippines was a diverse collection of different people, of different states, of different cultures, of different languages, of different ethnicities before it was colonized. It's similar to how Indonesia today was not really one Indonesia before Europeans came over to colonize the islands. And yes, there is a lot of similarities between the Philippines and Indonesia that a lot of people do not know about, especially in the Philippines. So yes, similar to Indonesia before the Philippines became the Philippines that we know of today, before it was colonized and named the Philippines, the islands, all 7,000 islands, was pretty much divided into different nations, different cultures, different languages, different ethnicities that coexisted with each other. They were connected, but it wasn't one nation. It was a collection of different but beautiful and colorful nations that we need to recognize today. And yes, parts of the Philippines or this island and its pre-colonial societies back then before Europeans came over were Muslim. And not just in the Mindanao. Most people know how Islam has had a strong presence throughout Mindanao's history. Mindanao is the second largest island in the southern part of the Philippines, the southern third of the Philippines. But what a lot of people do not know is that other parts of what is now the Philippines, other parts of the islands were also Muslim. For example, today's capital city, Manila, in the northern island of Luzon, today Manila is the center of the Catholic faith, of the Christian Catholic faith in Asia. But it was once a Muslim walled city called Maynilad before the Spaniards conquered it. So when the Spanish conquistadors took over Maynilad, they literally built the colonial walled city of Intramuros de Manila, literally right on top of the old Muslim walled city called Maynilad. And it wasn't just Maynilad that was a Muslim community in Luzon before Europeans came over. Even in the early part of the colonization, there were parts of Luzon that were also Muslim. In fact, many pre-colonial Kapampangan communities were also Muslim. For example, during the epic battle of Bangkusai back in 1571, 446 years ago, around 2,000 Muslim Kapampangan warriors from the independent states of Makabebe and Hagonoy fought against the Spanish conquistadors. It was an epic naval battle that 
not much people know of today. That even the Europeans did not expect to encounter in what is now Southeast Asia. So yes, Islam has had a significant presence, not just in the island of Mindanao, but also in different parts of the archipelago. Although today, the image of Islam and being Muslim in the Philippines has been tainted by violence, by misunderstanding, by generations of oppressions and discriminations and endless stereotypes. It is important for us today to be open in understanding Islam, especially within our own communities, within our own roots, beyond the anti-Muslim propaganda. Because we share a lot with them and they're part of our own roots, of our own histories. And it's only through recognizing all these injustices that has happened to different people can we only achieve justice. And like what we say, without justice, there can be no peace. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please leave a comment down below. Hit the like and share button. And if you are new here, please subscribe. Hey, wait a sec. <laughs> Don't forget to click the bell icon for notification of my latest videos. Keep on watching. Blue 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 Blue